Hey, Steve Noble, Noble Moto. What we're going to do today is inspect the primary chain tensioner. That's the plastic puck down in here that the chain actually rides on. This bike's got 25,000 miles on it, something like that. And I've never checked it, and Harley was not known for putting good plastic in stuff. So, we're going to pop the cover, the primary cover off of this, and we're going to give it an inspection. I'll even show you how to replace it and reinstall it, even if it's in good condition. We'll still cover that anyways. So, let's move in a little closer and uh, see what we got going on. To remove the left side foot peg mount, you have two Allen screws here. They each take a 5 16 Allen wrench. I have an Allen socket in place of an Allen wrench. Uh, it's just a lot handier and a lot stronger. Wait a minute. There we go. You don't actually need an extension this long. I'm just doing this so I can get my hands out of the camera shot. Lefty Lucy, that one free. Hop on over the other side. Lefty Lucy, that one free. Full disclosure, I broke both these bolts free before I did this, before I hit record. So, saves a lot of grief. So hold your foot peg up a little bit. Lefty loosey that bolt all the way on out of there. Then, lefty loosey the other one all the way on out of there. Probably blocking all the light there, aren't I? All right. To remove your clutch cover, your derby cover, you're gonna to wanna to take these six screws out of here. However, they were originally a Torx bit, and I replaced them with Allen screws because I kinda of hate Torx bits. I don't remember what size Torx bit it was, but I'll look it up and put it right there on the screen. Cool. Now, the Allen screws I have in here take a 5 30 seconds Allen bit. So we're going to break each one of these free. You want to break them all free because that way you don't have one that's just going crooked and making it extra difficult to get that last screw or two free. Once you get them all free, you can lefty-loosey them all out of there. My advice would be leave the top one and the bottom one in for now. We're just doing that to hold the whole thing in place. Now, take the top one out. Why the top one? I don't know. You can take the bottom one out. Take one of them out. Hold the clutch cover in with your other hand. Then take the final screw out. You shouldn't get any oil out of here if your bike is up straight. If your bike is leaned over on angle, uh, you're going to get oil out of this sucker. Then, if it doesn't easily pop off of here, you can take a flathead screwdriver, wiper clean. I recommend doing this down at the bottom in case you scratch it. Just put it up in there and twist a little bit. Cover's going to fall off of there. Hopefully a little more, less graceful than that. There was a hex bit and a spring that needed to come out of there. Hopefully you've got that thing somewhere, because that sits right back up in there. On those little flats. That's what holds the adjuster tight. We're not going to worry about that for the time being. But we're going to take that piece off, and we're going to put it inside our clutch cover. Now... To replace our seal, we're going to take a knife and put it underneath here and peel this seal right on out. Or maybe we can use our fingernails. Peel that off. If you're saving it for some reason because you're replacing the cover, set it in a clean location. Set it off to the side. When loosening your clutch cable, take your clips off or cut whatever zip ties. Lift your rubber slinky up. Try to get it out of the way. Hold on to the cable with two wrenches. Loosen the jam nut up. Spin the jam nut way down out of the way. Then you can take this bottom section, which should spin, and thread it all the way in. Give you all the slack you need on the cable. That will help you get the clutch cable unhooked at either end. Clutch cable removal. There's a snap ring right there. I swear to God it's there. Getting this shot has been a bit of a challenge. 
take your snap ring pliers. There we go. Take the snap ring off, just like that. Set that in a safe location. Remove the pin. Whoop! Catch it as it falls to the floor. Now you can take your whole lever, pull it forward. Take up that slob in there, pull it to the left, and you can take the cable out of the groove, slide it all the way out of here. To remove the cable, just take this plastic pin right on out of here. Cable comes right out. All right, take your smaller screwdriver, crank that all the way in there too. This little nut is gonna wanna fall out of here. You can actually take it out in your hand there. Oh, uh, if the screw, might have to hold the screw in the center there and thread them apart. Take that, set this in a clean location. This is internal mechanical parts. You wanna keep these super, super clean. Now, you can take this whole big disc sucker right out the back here. Here's what you do. You then take this whole big disc, rotate it 180 degrees. You're going to get almost there, and this piece is going to come off this little lug here. Do not drop this inside. It hooks right off the end of the cable. If you drop that inside, I'm not sure how far it'll go. I think the clutch will stop it. If it doesn't, you have to take this cover off. If you're taking this cover off already, it's okay. So again, internal engine parts. We're gonna put these over here on a clean rag. To get the clutch cable out, we have to undo the clutch tension here on the adjuster. So we'll take the jam nut. So there's what looks like two nuts together and then one nut down here. This top, there's the top one here. And then there's that one that's pressed up against it. We're gonna break that one that's pressed up against it free. Somewhere or another it's a 12 and 13 millimeter. I'll make this stuff up. i just tell you how it is. Spin them on down there. Spin that jam nut on free. Now, you can take the bottom one, it should spin, and you can run the adjustment all the way in. Hopefully you can see this. And you should be able to twist this sucker on out of here. Comes out just like that. You can just take this O-ring, pick it right up off of here. So this nut here in the back, that's your primary chain case drain plug. This one here in the front is the primary chain tensioner. To change the oil, you want to remove the one in the back. So take a 5 8 wrench, lefty loosey that on out of there. This one's gonna come right out, and hardly any oil is gonna come out because this is actually the second time I did this because the first time I forgot to hit record. So, got a little bit more oil pouring on out of there. Set your drain plug in a clean location. Oh, while we're at, Make sure you check the magnet on here. This one had a little bit of fuzz on it when I took it off, which was just metal shavings. Not a huge deal. It's just parts of your clutch wearing down. So clean that off, set that off to another location there. To loosen up your primary chain tensioner. So there's a big nut on here. Use the adjustable wrench. You should probably use a real wrench. And that quarter inch Allen goes down underneath and break that sucker free. Also going to move very free because the second time I did this. Then just back it off a little ways. That'll let the puck drop down off the tensioner, which will make the, chain, make the primary cover easier to remove. To remove your shifter, locate your quarter inch Allen wrench or Allen socket. In this case, we're gonna put in our 3 8 ratchet. Before you take it off of there, um, you may want to put a mark on it. That way you can remember where it was. So, uh, I'm going to put a mark on here at 12 o'clock. And, uh, you probably can't see on camera a little bit, but I can see the black mark on top of the black finish on there. Take this quarter inch Allen here. Get your ratchet to work properly. Break that bolt free. 
then spin her all the way on out of there. You have to take the bolt all the way out to get it off of there. Or I'm sorry, to get the shifter off. That was kind of a redundant statement. Because there's a little notch in here. So if all is well and good, you should be able to just grab the shifter and pull it off towards you. It has a spline shaft on it. Let's say it doesn't move that easy. You can possibly get behind it with a big screwdriver here, risk scratching your primary cover, or you can get in here with a large screwdriver and twist it a little bit, and this C-clamp portion will open up a little bit, and hopefully it'll slide right off of there. So, we're gonna take out all these Allen screws. It takes a 3 16 Allen wrench. Put her in there all the way deep, break her free. Cool, all the screws are out. Hurrah, hurrah, hurrah. Now, we can take the cover off. Put your fingers in here, give it a little pull. Nope. Might have to give it a little tap from the side. Oh, wait. Take a little rubber ring off the shaft there. Then take your rubber hammer. Keep jiggling around and tapping on it. Eventually she'll come free. Don't use a metal hammer on it. It's not a good idea. Slide it straight off of there. But da 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 all right let's see how she's looking in here chain's still in pretty good shape now no real side to side movement tensioner puck that plastic's got some wear on it i'll probably be investing in a new one of those yeah just to be on the safe side sprockets are good Everything else, starter gear looks good. Uh, yeah, everything looks in pretty good shape. Uh, if your intent was just to replace this gasket, you should be able to peel the old one off of here. Ta -da! Some say these are reusable. It's got 20,000 miles on it. Get another one. Don't be cheap. Your friends will make fun of you because your bike leaks all the time. They don't have to hear the Harley jokes. So what you can do from here is put some degreaser or engine cleaner or whateverness on a rag. Uh, scrub all this down really good. Any old gasket pieces, parts, or residue need to come off of here. Uh, that way it'll be, and the same with this outer cover. That way it'll be nice and clean and nothing else will be there besides the gasket. So it'll seal up nice and tight and it won't leak on you. This is the primary chain tensioner. For reference, this is the outside of the primary. Whoop. This is the inside of the primary chain tensioner. This plastic puck on here is what holds tension on the chain. As you can see, there's some pretty good grooves wore into this thing. It's not wore out yet, but it's not in great shape. So we're going to replace it. We got a new one. There you can see how smooth the top of this new one is. Uh, it comes with a new nut, new nylon locking nut, and of course, good threads and everything on there. So we're going to remove this old one. Take note of the orientation. This lip here goes towards technically the outside of the bike or the inside of the outer cover, depending on how you want to think about it. So what we're going to have to do is take a quarter inch Allen wrench, stick that inside of the tensioner there, then take a 7 8 wrench, and you can spin one or the other, but basically thread that nut off of there. Might have been a good idea to spray some blaster on these threads and clean them up before I started this. Now the nuts off of there. Should be able to slide this. Whoops, sorry. Doesn't slide out of there. Duh. Take your Allen wrench and spin it on down out of there because this case is threaded. To do. Now be a good time to take some degreaser and clean up the inside of your primary case. 
Now from here, take your new primary chain tensioner, slide it in there, remember lip towards the case, stand it up like so, and spin this up in here. It's one of those rare times where it's not righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. I'm actually going to spin it to the left to make it thread on up through there. Hmm. Here's an interesting observation we're going to point out. <clears throat> Initially it jammed up right there. This metal frame here, the puck was not sitting all the way onto it, so when I tried to thread it in, it was tight. So before you install that thing, make sure this metal frame here is pushed all the way into the plastic. Otherwise you could potentially cross thread it and strip it out. There, it should just spin right up through there. It shouldn't take a whole lot of force. Now we're gonna crank this all the way up and through because we wanna have some travel on it. That way it'll make for easy installation. And then of course we'll crank the nut or the uh, Allen wrench screw all the way in to set the tension. And we'll also set that with a torque wrench. Now we can take our new nylon locking nut, start that on there, hold this with our quarter inch Allen wrench, and we can spin this nut a ways on up in there. Once you get on by a few threads, it should turn a little freer. But it's still going to take a little bit of force just because it is a nylon locking nut. And we're going to stop with it right there. Now it's ready for reinstallation. While you have this off, check to make sure your gasket surface is nice and clean. Check to make sure drain plug surface is nice and clean. Because once this is back on the bike, you can't see it. It's on the bottom. So, our cover is ready for reinstallation. So let's move back on over the bike. Now, take your primary cover. Slide it right back on there. Remember, your shifter has to go through the shifter shaft. There's a little bushing on there. You might have to reach underneath and push the chain up to make sure it's on top of the tensioner puck. And slide it right back on there. Before you go any further, give it a visual. See if the gasket's sticking out anywhere. Hopefully you kept your bolts in order. I did just off screen. I'm going to slide one in down here. I'm going to put that in a few threads. Checking again for the gasket. I'm going to stick one in up here. Again, checking to make sure the gasket and everything is in place. Now, you'll notice I only ran these in a few threads. Whenever you're doing any type of large bolt pattern item, especially something that could potentially flex, uh, like a primary co case cover, you want to definitely start all the bolts in, and then you want to do it in a crisscross pattern. This is also really important if you have a gasket in there, because you don't want the gasket to shift, and if you tighten up a couple of them, and then you try to put another bolt in somewhere and the gasket slightly shifted, it'll be a pain to get the bolt in there, or it could damage a gasket, yada, yada, yada. Start all the bolts in first. You only gotta do it by a few threads. Remember, there's no need to put thread locker on these. Matter of fact, you're better off not doing that. If anything, uh, it wouldn't hurt to put a little blaster or a little bit of oil or something on the threads just to make sure they thread in a little easier, especially in bolt holes that have a bunch of corrosion on them. Now there's definitely a torque pattern to this. And I will follow that pattern, but I will also try to put a little image up here on the screen somewhere. And maybe you can screenshot it. Or you can get on Google and find it that way too. Or check your service manual if you have one. It's pretty readily available on the internet though.
And you'll notice I'm just snugging all these up right now, and then I'm going to go back and torque them in the same pattern. Now we're going to torque these 10 to 12 foot-pounds, but check your service manual. Now we have our new o-ring here on our clutch cable, so we're going to reinstall the clutch cable. We're going to thread it in here, and we're going to be very, very careful to make sure we do not cross-thread that. We're going to try our darndest to make sure it threads in there straight. And because you're spinning the entire clutch cable, this can be a bit tricky. Have lots of patience with this. To give you a tip, when you're installing this, if you aren't sure on the alignment, remember it's threading into this boss right here. There's a hole going all the way through it. So you can look from the front and make sure you're threading in there straight. Make sure you're not doing, make sure you're not going this way or this way or this way or this way because that's how you're going to cross thread it. <clears throat> then tighten this up. Tighten it till you feel the threads just kind of bottom out in there. You're just trying to compress that o-ring. Right there is good to go. If I push the cable in from the other end, you can see it right there, and it's ready to be hooked up down here. Then after that, we'll hook it up with the handlebars. Now for reinstalling this big hole honking assembly here. So the snap ring will go in first. So this is your clutch throwout assembly. To explain how this works, if you look down inside here, there's three ball bearings in there. If you take the snap ring off of there, you could actually see the ball bearings in there. Matter of fact, let's do it. So you can take this snap ring right up off of there. Set the snap ring in a safe location. Hold this flat and lift up off of here. Now you can see down in here, I'm gonna tilt to the best of my abilities, whoop, without losing them. There's three ball bearings that go in there and they ride inside these ramps here. Now is a good time to give a visual inspection of the ball bearings and of the ramps. There should be ramps in here also. The big thing you want to make sure is that there is no pitting inside of here. If there's any type of pitting, you know, like little divots, little potholes type thing, any, any of that on the ramp surface or on the ball bearings, you're going to want to replace that. Because when you pull your clutch, this actually rides up and down on and off your clutch. So when you pull your clutch, it pulls the cable and it goes whoop and expands and goes whoop back in. And that's what actually pushes in on the diaphragm spring. So if those are pitted up at all, that's more force it's going to take out of your left hand when you pull the clutch in. So that's a pain. Nobody wants that. Now, if you're wondering which way it goes in here, this little pin here, or the boss, goes 180 degrees from this piece down here. Remember, it slides in this notch, and then this cable hooks into that little do sucker right that goes into here. So next, we'll reinstall the snap ring on here now that we inspected it. Make sure it's down in our little groove there, which it is. So the next thing you're going to want to do is take your clutch cable. Hopefully you can see that. You're going to want to take your clutch cable and you're going to want to hook it back onto there. You'll see it kind of pops in, pulls forward, locks itself in place. Take this, start almost all the way down. Spin it all the way up to 12 o'clock and should just slide right back on in there. Now, take this shouldered nut, I guess is what we're going to call it, and it goes in there shoulder first. 
Make sure there's no dirt and debris in there. You're going to have to hold that flat inside there with a flathead screwdriver and then spin that nut right onto the shaft. Should thread on there nice and easy. If it, bide, if it uh, binds up in any way, something's wrong. Once you get it in there so far to where the hex starts grabbing this whole throw on assembly, that'll hold it in place and you can back this off of here. Or basically turn it to the left and set that nut down inside of there. So when setting the throw out play or the backlash or whatever you want to call it, what we're going to do here is we're actually going to set the distance that this thing has to expand before it compresses the um, uh, diaphragm spring in there. So we're going to turn this in as in righty tighty, because what's going to happen is it's going to thread in there and it's going to make this whole assembly really loose. So what happens is when you pull your clutch in, it goes like this, it expands out, you let your clutch out, it goes back here and ramps down. So take this, rock it back and forth, find that seated all the way in place. Then take your flathead screwdriver, back this screw out to the left. You're going to do this with a really, really light touch on your fingers. You're going to go until it makes contact, or you'll feel it just stop. And at that point, that whole throw-out assembly has now clamped together onto the ball bearing. So right there, if you go any more, you're going to start pushing the diaphragm spring in and basically be pulling in the clutch just a wee little bit. We don't want that. Also, you need to have just a wee little bit of clearance so oil gets in there around the ball bearings, too. So we thread it till it stopped, and then we're gonna back it off maybe a little less than an eighth of a turn. So to give you an example, stopped is about 10.30. You know, if we're looking at the slot of the screwdriver, we're gonna take it to about 11.30, not even all the way at 12 o'clock. And that's it, it stays right there. Now when you reinstall your clutch cover, What's going to, or your derby cover, you have this little nut here with the spring washer on it, and it's got two little flats. When you slide this in here, it's going to grab the flats that are on this shaft. Whoop. And then the spring against the cover will hold it all in place. And that's going to lock your setting in place right there. Setting the primary chain tension. We have to take the inspection cover off right up here. And that is, on this one, it takes a 5 30 seconds Allen key and we can thread it right on out of there. I broke these free before I hit record. Saves a lot of grief in camera shooting world. And you should be able to just kind of hook this, whoop, your fingertips or a screwdriver, take it right on out of there. Factory specs for this are half inch, half inch to three eighths tension. So we're going to split the difference, and I'm going to set my dial calipers at uh, about 7 16 So that is basically the distance that this is sticking out down here. Now you can take a clean screwdriver, and you can move it, and you can see, oh my gosh, we're way out. Of course we are. We haven't set the tension yet. But you'll be setting it from where the bottom of it is, and we only want it to go up to right about there. You can use a ruler for this, tape measure, whatever you want. I have the dial calipers on hand. So I'm using that one. So down here at the bottom, you can take your quarter inch Allen wrench. And you're gonna thread this up in here. Remember the nut is already broke free on this. Now the change adjustment, you can break this free with your big old seven eighths wrench. And you hold the Allen screw with a quarter inch wrench and just crack it free. Now we have this backed way off of here. So now I'm going to take this primary tensioner screw, or the quarter inch Allen, and I'm going to crank it in until I see the chain start lifting up. Once I start see it start lifting up, I'm going to check it again. And basically what I'm doing is I just moved it until it started taking slop out of it, and now we're, we're going now we're going to see where we're at. So really I'm just kind of eyeballing this to the end that's sticking out here. And, oh man, that's a that's actually pretty good. Wow, 
I was expecting to have to go a little further. I don't. Cool. We're going to leave it right there. So we're going to hold that in place with our quarter inch wrench. Then we're going to take our seven eighths and we're going to just tighten her up. There we go. Now we're going to check this again. And yeah, that looks pretty good. From there, we're going to put the cover back on. So use a new gasket if you have it. These are kind of reusable gaskets. At least just make sure it's clean and put her back up on there. Thread both these up on there and torque them to spec. So route your clutch cable wherever it is it needs to be routed. Get your clutch cable ready. You can put this little plastic pin through there. Take that back out of there. So, take, get your clutch cable ready, slide the big eyelet through the clutch lever. Install this little plastic bushing here that holds the clutch in place. And then there's a groove right here. That's what your cable is going to slide through. Now, with that bushing, with the cable attached to the bushing, slide your clutch lever in. Slide the cable through that groove. Then, Take the pin you took out, slide it back into the clutch. Then from there, you can take your snap ring that you took off, your teeny tiny little snap ring, and you can reinstall your snap ring into that groove on the bottom of the lever. Obviously, you still need to adjust the slop in there, but everything should be, a re should be firmly attached now. Now on your clutch cable, Slide your rubber slinky thing up out of the way. And remember, the bottom one of this spins. So you can spin that, hopefully, with your hand. And as you're doing this, it's essentially making the sheathy on the cable longer. Make sure this jam nut's just loose and hanging out in the middle. So you're going to crank that cable sleeve until that gap closes. This gap right here closes up on the lever. Once that closes up, go a little bit more there. Make sure this part of the cable is seated in there nice and tight. Even give the clutch a couple pulls. Make sure it's not going anywhere. Now you just want to have just a teeny tiny little bit of play right there. So we're going to back the adjuster off just a wee little bit. Until we have just a wee little bit of play. Just enough to, oh, right there. Just enough to verify that the clutch cable is loose inside the sheathing. Now that you have that set, you can run the lock nut up. Hold it with one wrench, or hold the cable with one wrench. Jam lock the jam nut down with the other. Just like that. Then put your rubber slinky back over it. Reinstall your little clips or whatever holds your cable to the frame. Now that everything's back and buttoned up, we can add some gear oil. I'm putting 7590 weight in there. You can use whatever you choose. I'm using Lucas. Synthetic. Why am I using Lucas? Because it's a name brand that was on sale. No one gives me any free oil yet. If anyone does, I'll be happy to shamelessly endorse your product. Fucking sh Jesus Christ. Here's a key step. You see this right here? You have to put the drain plug back in the, the uh, primary before you put the oil in. Take your drain plug. Make sure it's clean. Make sure it has a new O-ring in there. Thread it back in. <sighs> Sigh in disgust with yourself. Tighten her up. Wait a minute, what size is that? That's a 11 16. It's a 5 8. Where'd my 5 8 wrench go? Tighten her up. 
Jesus, I can't believe I did that. Put the rest of the oil in there. Now, uh, now I'm gonna have to go buy a little more gear oil just to fill this sucker up. Take your spring nut, or the nut with the spring on it, slide it up on there wherever it lines up. Take your gasket, all nice and clean, onto your clean surface here, slide it into the groove. If it doesn't stick, you can take a little general purpose grease and put it on the gasket, and that will help it stick in place. Now you're ready to reinstall your clutch cover. You have this little bump right here, doo -doo, and that goes over the little bump right here where your clutch cable goes. The spring should go into this, the spring there should go into this center disc. So if you look at it from the side as you're installing it, you should be able to see it drop right in there. Then hold it up in place. Careful not to jiggle it around as you do it because you can knock the gasket out. And thread a screw or two back in here. Keep pushing on it until you get two screws in. Make sure they're on opposite sides. That way the cover doesn't go crooked and the gasket doesn't pop out. It's happened to me before. And just make those finger tight just enough to hold the cover in place. Now tighten these up in a crisscross pattern. And of course, torque them to spec afterwards. Now that that's completed, we can reinstall our shifter. To reinstall the shifter, slide your little rubber grommet back on there. Take your shifter itself. Remember to remove your bolts. Slide it back on there in the location you had it, which I can still see with our black magic marker. and tighten that up. I'm gonna take my size of this. Can't see it. 5 16 Allen socket, or eight millimeters if that's all you have. And spin the bolts in there. Get the first one by a few threads. Get the second one in by a few threads. Then run them all the way in there. And of course, torque them to spec. All right, it's all back together. Wipe all your greasy handprints off it. Check to make sure your clutch works properly and you are ready to go for a ride. That's all I got.